Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed, another monitor review coming at you today. And this has been a hotly requested one. We're looking at the ViewSonic Elite XG270QG. It's been on the market for a little while. Human malware, of course, impacting our ability to get a review sample, but it's here now and we'll be going into a deep dive on everything in a moment. The reason why this has been so hotly requested is that on face value, it's a better version of LG's extremely popular 27G850 monitor. The XG270QG uses the same 27 inch 1440p LG nano IPS panel with rated one millisecond response times and a wide color gamut, but includes several other features that the LG model doesn't. The refresh rate is overclocked from 144Hz up to 165Hz. We get a backlight strobing mode for additional motion clarity and the inclusion of NVIDIA's G-Sync module, which brings features like variable overdrive. Red flags are probably already popping up in people's heads over the inclusion of G-Sync, but rest assured, the XG270QG is using the latest generation G-Sync module that provides adaptive sync with both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. I confirmed this with my Radeon RX 5700 XT over DisplayPort, Radeon settings reports free sync compatibility, and I had a tear-free gaming experience. So no issues here on that front. You won't be locked into the NVIDIA GPU ecosystem when buying this G-Sync monitor. G-Sync monitors are also known to be more expensive than their FreeSync counterparts due to the cost of NVIDIA Scalar module. That is somewhat true with the XG270QG. This monitor is priced at $600 US compared to $500 for the 27G850, and it's a bit more expensive in other regions. But on the other hand, it does pack in more features, which makes this increase a bit easier to justify. Certainly, it's not a straight $200 more expensive, like what used to be the case in the early days of these adaptive sync ecosystems. ViewSonic has chosen a high-end design for the XG270QG, which makes sense given its price tag and elite branding. This sort of construction is similar to other flagship monitors from companies like Acer, Asus, and Gigabyte. Think Predator, ROG, or Aorus products here. So it's pretty good and in my opinion an upgrade on the 27G850. The LG monitor is still good in this department, but the XG270QG is that step above. This is a chunkier monitor than the 27G850 with a beefier, more complicated stand, but we do get somewhat improved ergonomics with the full complement of adjustability. Height, tilt, pivot and swivel. The bezels are a little thicker here, but the construction in general feels more solid than LG's design. The stand is rock solid with its wide metal base, and the plastic build around the panel is tight and not as crazy as something from ASUS. ViewSonic has integrated RGB lighting here in two locations. We get a ring around the stand connection and two strips along the bottom edge below the display. The bottom strips make a little bit of sense if you want to add a bit of ambient lighting to your setup, but the ring on the back is a bit pointless. Nevertheless, we know some people love their RGB, and again, this is a feature that ViewSonic provides that LG does not. You'll find a few other small inclusions around the place too. There's a headphone stand on the left side, and two mouse bungees on either side of the stand, depending on your preference. Then for ports, it's largely standard stuff. We get DisplayPort and HDMI as the only inputs, then a USB hub and audio output. There's also crappy internal speakers if you need it. ViewSonic has thankfully used a directional toggle for controlling the OSD, which makes navigation much easier. And there are some useful features in there. Crosshairs, shadow boosting modes, blue light filters, and all that stuff. However, I did find the OSD a bit janky to use and buggy at times. I ran into a few issues like when changing game modes, switching back to a mode I'd already configured would turn off my custom white balance settings. I also ran into a few occasions which were hard to replicate where the overdrive setting I chose wasn't applied or reverted to default after a monitor reboot. These issues weren't common or persistently annoying, but the OSD experience does seem to lack a bit of polish. Let's talk about performance. The ViewSonic XG270QG provides three overdrive settings. We get standard, advanced, and ultra fast, with standard being the default. At the maximum 165Hz refresh rate, the standard mode provides solid but not amazing performance with a 5.5 millisecond greater gray average and no overshoot. We do see good refresh rate compliance here too at 90% or so, despite the mode not really pushing the limits of the display. Moving up to the advanced overdrive mode and 
Yeah, not a great situation. We do see a huge jump in gray to gray performance up over 3 milliseconds to a lightning quick 2.3 millisecond average. However, this has come at the cost of overshoot, with 60% of transitions showing some form of inverse ghosting. Despite the numbers here in practice at 165Hz, these overshoot spikes decay pretty quickly, so the bright trails aren't hugely noticeable, but I'll talk more on this soon. Like LG, ViewSonic does advertise the XG270QG as a 1 millisecond monitor, and they've included a completely pointless overdrive mode to achieve that level of performance. The ultra-fast mode does deliver a 1.69 millisecond greater gray average, but the level of overshoot here is insane, with an average error of 61.8%, so you get massive bright trails following any moving object. Certainly not ideal. Back to the advanced mode, and here's a look throughout the refresh rate range. At 165Hz, I didn't find the levels of overshoot reported to be too noticeable in practice, but I can't say the same for lower refresh rates. While the level of overshoot remains consistent right the way down to around 85Hz, and greater grade performance also remains similar, at 144Hz and below, these overshoot characteristics don't decay as quickly, so they're more noticeable. This means that the minor blur trail you see from the standard mode with 5 to 6 millisecond responses is replaced with what is in my opinion a more noticeable inverse ghost trail. For this reason I don't recommend using the advanced overdrive mode. How does the standard mode hold up throughout the refresh rate range? Very well, although again, performance isn't perhaps where it could be. At 144Hz, we're down to a 5.77 millisecond greater gray average, then 5.82 milliseconds at 120Hz, 5.79 milliseconds at 100Hz, and 5.74 milliseconds at 85Hz before settling into around 5.7 milliseconds at 60Hz, all with no overshoot. So we are pretty consistently getting between 5.5 and 5.8 millisecond greater gray numbers here, with zero inverse ghosting concerns and very decent refresh rate compliance. Let's see how this compares to other monitors on the market looking at peak performance. There's a lot to break down here, so let's run through some key comparisons. The LG 27G850 is clearly a stronger performer here at each panel's maximum refresh rate. The LG model is 1.5 milliseconds faster with manageable overshoot, putting it around 35% faster on average. LG's option has better overdrive settings, which we'll explore further in a moment. Then we have comparisons to the Inolux series of more budget-oriented 1440p high-refresh IPS monitors, which include the ViewSonic VX27582 KPM HD, the Pixio PX7 Prime, and the Gigabyte Aorus FI27Q-P. Performance from these monitors vary, but we either see slower response times or faster responses with much higher error rates. In general, I'd say the XG270QG provides a better experience than those panels. We also have here the ASUS VG27AQ, which uses an AU Optronics panel, and again, you see better performance from the XG270QG in the form of similar response time averages with far better overshoot handling. Diving deeper into the XG270QG versus 27G850 comparison, here is how both monitors perform throughout a range of select refresh rates. The XG270QG is very solid in terms of overshoot with its standard overdrive mode, and not the best using the advanced mode, although it is faster. The 27G850 seems to perfectly split the middle here, offering around 4 millisecond response times with some but limited overshoot that's not noticeable in practice until we get down to 60 hertz. The 27G850 also offers a normal mode that I haven't shown here that consistently produces 5 millisecond response times with lower error rates. The ViewSonic model only coming with these standard and advanced overdrive modes is really limiting this panel's performance compared to the LG model that offers more overshoot control in the sweet spot for this nano IPS panel, which seems to be between 4 and 6 millisecond response times. The XG270QG really needed to split the middle here like LG did with their overdrive tuning. That's not to say the XG270QG is bad, because it does outperform most other monitors as I mentioned earlier. Here's one example of an Inolux based model in the Gigabyte FI27Q-P. While the ViewSonic monitor is offering rock solid performance all the way down to 60Hz, indicating we don't need to change overdrive modes depending on the refresh rate, the FI27Q-P falls away massively at the low end of the refresh range. There's significant overshoot at 60Hz, while this isn't present with the ViewSonic option. I won't bore you with another graph, but it's even worse for a monitor like the VG27AQ. 
Some people also might be interested in comparisons to other display types. So we see here that generally TN monitors provide better performance while VAs perform worse. This is especially true in terms of dark level averages, where the XG270QG blows VA offerings like the 32GK650F and CQ27G2 out of the water. In no surprise for a high-end IPS display, the XG270QG delivers good response time compliance at 90%, showing that it can deliver a true 165Hz experience. Most other IPS displays are in the same boat, although this monitor does deliver the best 165Hz experience out of the IPS bunch that we've been talking about. Average error rates, as expected, are very low, given we've just been talking about the slower overdrive modes that ViewSonic have been implementing. What about 60 hertz? Well, the XG270QG is one of the best high refresh IPS monitors for gaming at 60 hertz. Let's say you use one of these inputs for a console, or maybe your GPU just isn't fast enough for a high refresh 1440p performance for now. Performance is great at around the 5.5 millisecond mark, but also you don't need to adjust the overdrive mode at all to achieve these results. Pretty much every other monitor needs to be adjusted to get the best out of the 60Hz mode, including the 27G850. So the XG270QG does hold a decent advantage at lower refresh rates. Part of this is the variable overdrive you get from the G-Sync module. Input lag, as is the case for a lot of modern monitors, is fantastic at below one millisecond processing delay and an overall input lag of below 10 milliseconds. This isn't the absolute quickest monitor for latency you can get, 240Hz TN and IPS is where you'll need to go for that, but still quite nice results here. What about power consumption? The XG270QG is the most power hungry of its type, consuming almost 30% more power than the 27G850. The NVIDIA G-Sync module is known to be quite power hungry, so I suspect this is where the 9 watts difference lies between each model when calibrated. One key selling point for the XG270QG over the 27G850 is the inclusion of backlight strobing for improved motion clarity. But is the feature any good? Well, on face value, it's quite a limited implementation, only functioning at fixed 120, 100, or 85 hertz refresh rates, of course, with G-Sync disabled. A bit surprising we can't use it at the highest refresh rates the panel has to offer. And the actual implementation is poor. There's significant strobe crosstalk and even a chromatic split that causes a red tint to the fringes of moving objects and their duplicate images. This is due to a slow red phosphor in the backlight used to support such a wide gamut on these nano IPS panels. Blurbusters has an article explaining why this happens that I'll link below, but essentially this limits the picture quality with the backlight strobing mode enabled. It's a disappointing result for one of this monitor's key features in its fight to provide something extra over the 27G850. It seems this wide gamut panel is simply not compatible with backlight strobing, so that would explain why LG neglected to include the feature with their version of this monitor. Time to look at color performance. As this monitor uses an LG Nano IPS panel, we are seeing around 95% DCI-P3 coverage, so this is a proper wide gamut display. However, the monitor offers no way to restrict this gamut down to sRGB for use with standard content, so this is going to cause a few of the typical issues we see for general use. Out of the box, grayscale performance was mediocre. My unit shipped with a greenish yellow tint, which has caused an incorrect white balance and a mediocre grayscale delta E average. Then when looking at saturation performance, the white point issue is compounded with oversaturation while viewing sRGB content, so we see an average delta E result of 3.63 in this test and 3.73 in color checker. These results are not color accurate, so the XG270QG is not well factory calibrated and isn't suitable for color accurate work in this state, but it will be fine for gaming. A few OSD tweaks can adjust the white point into an acceptable level, but as I mentioned, without an sRGB gamut clamp, there is no way to tone down the oversaturation without a color profile. Nevertheless, here's the results from OSD tweaking, and we do get good grayscale results now, with a nice and flat CCT curve, good adherence to the gamma curve, and a low delta E average in the 1.0 range. This does lead to a 1 delta E point advantage to our color tests, so the results here are solid and again quite suitable for gaming. 
However, with a wide color gamut, I really wanted to see how this monitor can be pushed for color accurate work, and thankfully, with the full calibration, I was able to achieve really good results. This shouldn't be too much of a surprise given the panel is easily capable of 100% sRGB coverage, but we also get really good results for P3 work. Saturation and color checker averages below 1.0, and consistent results below 2.0 indicate you could pretty comfortably use this panel for a bit of content creation alongside gaming, provided you have it calibrated. As this display uses the same panel as LG's 27G850, the following sections won't produce any surprises. Brightness is similar with both monitors at around 330 nits, which I think is sufficient for most users despite its low placement on this chart. Some monitors can deliver more in the 400 nit range, but this isn't necessary for most people. Contrast remains the key weakness to LG's fast nano IPS displays. A calibrated contrast ratio around 750 to 1 is poor, often below the levels we see from modern TNs. In practice, this means blacks aren't very deep, and it's especially noticeable in dark viewing environments like gaming with the lights off. In brighter lighting, it's unlikely you'll see too much of a difference, but no doubting we are seeing the same flaws with the ViewSonic model as with the LG. Viewing angles are excellent here with the XG270QG, as is panel uniformity. In fact, my XG270QG review unit is more uniform than my 27G850, so that's a nice bonus. Although it's not perfect, as you can see some fall away in the bottom right and top left corners, still quite a strong result from this ViewSonic monitor. Now we get into the challenging part of this review, which is wrapping everything up and making a recommendation on which monitor is the best one to buy. We're talking about high-end displays here that people will be buying and expecting to last for years, so there's a lot of things to consider, especially when there are so many high-refresh 1440p IPS options on the market. Clearly, one of the reasons people buy a $500 plus monitor is to get the best performance in all areas, and that's especially crucial for the XG270QG, which is being positioned as the best use of LG's ultra-fast nano IPS panel yet. Based on what I've seen, there's no definitive winner in that battle here, as each monitor has its strengths and weaknesses. Generally speaking, the 27G850 delivers faster response times, especially at higher refresh rates using its best overdrive mode. The LG option ends up 1.5 milliseconds or about 35% faster, which leads to better motion clarity. But this advantage is reduced if you're gaming at lower refresh rates or want to use a single overdrive mode for the entire adaptive sync range. In those situations, the LG monitor is still faster, but it's less than one millisecond faster, and the practical visual differences there are small. The ViewSonic does have some performance tricks up its sleeve, one of which is the higher 165Hz refresh rate, but it's only 15% higher than the LG and will require a pretty powerful gaming PC to get up there right now. If you're not playing above 144 FPS at similar refresh rates in the Adaptive Sync range, the LG monitor is faster. The XG270QG also has a backlight strobing mode, but as we saw, this isn't a great inclusion. In fact, due to the wide gamut supporting backlight, we get some weird artifacts in this mode. Some people may be able to overlook this fact and use this mode anyway if they really want a crisper image, but I personally wouldn't use it and I don't think it's much of a selling point here. In many other ways, the two monitors are identical, which is no surprise given they use the same panel. Very similar color performance with a similar level of inaccuracies out of the box, similar excellent viewing angles and uniformity, and a similarly poor contrast ratio. In my opinion, the ViewSonic monitor has a better, more robust design as well for what it's worth. When you weigh up all these considerations, the 27G850 and XG270QG end up being pretty similar in what they deliver, and I'd probably give a slight edge here to the 27G850 based on its superior performance. Clearly both of these monitors provide a better experience than your mid-range Enolux panel options like the VX275 82K PMHD and other models like the VG27AQ, so I think both are befitting of a place in the high-end market. So now we're really left with a battle on price. We've got two similar monitors, two different price points. Right now, the 27G850 is $500 US dollars, compared to the XG270QG at $600, and I just don't think there's enough extras on offer with the ViewSonic option to justify spending 20% more. If it really nailed those overdrive modes and offered a great backlight strobing feature, I'd have no trouble spending the extra cash, but neither area delivered quite what I was hoping for. If the XG270QG came down to $500 though, the decision would become much more difficult. Unfortunately, while the battle is a bit closer in the US with only a 20% price difference, 
it's a vastly different story in other territories. Here in Australia, the 27G850 is priced at 750 Australian dollars, while the XG270QG is a $1,200 monitor. A 60% price difference is just not justifiable at all, and I've seen similar situations in Europe. Get the 27G850 all day, every day when faced with that sort of price difference. It's just far too high in those certain territories right now. That's it for this review of the XG270QG. Not a bad monitor by any means. It does fall away a little bit because of that higher price, but I think a lot of high-end monitor buyers will be quite happy with this panel, especially if they get it on a nice discount or sale in the future if that happens. As always, you can subscribe for more monitor reviews, testing, analysis, all that sort of thing. Definitely hit that bell icon as well so you don't miss anything from us. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And if you do want to support our monitor testing, if you want access to our ICC profiles, our Discord chat, if you want to ask me questions or anything like that, we do appreciate all the support we get from our patrons. And if you want to sign up, links are in the description below. We also have merch available, again, Links in the description below, and I'll catch you in the next one.